Well, sorry for the delay there. We'll go ahead and get started. So we have a special weather, weather briefing for today. We have some unprecedented heat that is coming our way. Very hot temperatures, potentially all time record breaking. And of course, with this heat, you can imagine there'd be um, quite a lot of impacts that could happen with this as we go into this weekend into next week. So let's go ahead and get started. So here's the overview. So for today, we're looking at uh, very warm temperatures, upper 80s to mid 90s. We do have a threat of some isolated thunderstorms across the northeast portion of our region. So uh, mainly into that north Idaho, we might see uh, some isolated lightning strikes associated with that. Then as we go into tomorrow and Saturday, we're going to start seeing those temperatures ramping up. And uh, we've went ahead and highlighted this as a high impact with widespread temperatures in the 90s to uh, up to 110 degrees. And then it looks like our hottest periods will be as we go um, from Sunday into at least Wednesday, and it could stretch even um, longer than this. Um, there is some uncertainty with how uh, long the um, hottest temperatures are going to stick around. But Sunday to Wednesday is where we have our highest confidence with this heat, and we could be looking at um, temperatures widespread above 100 degrees, getting up to uh, above 110 degrees for a lot of places. And this would be, at least for some spots, could be breaking some of our all-time uh, high temperature records. And also would like to mention that our low temperatures are going to be very uh, warm as well. And we'll talk more about that too. There isn't going to be much of a recovery with the heat uh, as we go into the nighttime hours. And then, like I said, there is some uncertainty as far as when these very hot temperatures will start to be decreasing. We will see temperatures kind of trending downwards as we go towards the end of the week, but it's not going to like it's not going to be like a a big cool down or anything like that. It would be a gradual decrease in the temperatures. Um, oh, I see. There's a question here: the confidence of 110 degrees. I'll talk more about that when we look at some of the temperatures on a plain view, um, but we do have high confidence on those uh, temperatures for early next week in this sort of purple period that we have. And here is the heat risk map that we have. So anything in the purple there that is uh, looking at for our excessive heat, these are the kind of colors that we look for in our heat risk as far as doing excessive heat warnings where uh, potentially dangerous heat so essentially all of our area in eastern Washington and even up into north Idaho. So just very quickly, like I said, a threat of some isolated thunderstorms today where you see the green, essentially north Idaho, central panhandle, uh, mountain areas. <clears throat> this would be through 6 p.m. looking at maybe some light or isolated lightning strike. And main impact would be the potential for some new fire ignitions. So looking a bit more into the heat risk, so starting Saturday, persisting through next week. So these purple areas here, or that magenta color, this is um, getting into very high risk for the entire population. And this is also a long duration event. And like I also mentioned, very little or to no relief in the overnight hours. Looking at some of our historic record, records. So these are temperatures that are the hottest that we've ever recorded. Um, so in Washington, the more hottest temperature we've ever recorded is 118 degrees, Ice Arbor Dam. So east of Kennewick in Idaho, also 118 at Orofino. And, um, and then for some other locations here for all time records, Spokane 108. And up, oh, sorry, right here, 108. This is the all time. And so our forecast for Monday, Tuesday, we are at least, or we are uh, forecasting temperatures that would match that all time record. And uh, same thing for Wenatchee. You can see Colville, um, Winthrop. So there's a lot of locations where we could, at the very least, tie our all time high temperature records or possibly break the all-time high temperature records. And then some other notable records this month, It's it's been hot, as, as well as you know, it's been very dry spring into early um, summer, but there has actually been some extreme heat days 
in the in the West. This is not in our region, but Salt Lake City has tied their all-time high temperature record of 107. Shared in Wyoming as well. Some very hot uh, temperatures in Arizona. Earliest day they've seen um, 115, 118 degrees. So uh, it seems like it could be at least the start of the summer where we are seeing some extreme heat, which is unfortunate. Like I said, it's been dry and we are in um, drought conditions as well. So this is the this is going to loop, but this is the high temperature forecast that we're looking at going from Saturday all the way out through Sunday, July 4th. So as I mentioned, we could see some, we will be seeing the temperatures or it looks like we'll be seeing the temperatures kind of gradually kind of coming down. So here's Wednesday. And um, I guess it's actually, I don't think this does go all the way through July 4th. Sorry about that. But going out through um, trying to see where it picks up here. Okay, so now it's beginning. So this will be today's forecast, tomorrow forecast, Saturday's forecast, Sunday's forecast getting very hot, Tuesday's forecast, Wednesday's forecast, and then it loops back. So we don't have it going a lot through July 4th, like it says here. But the main message, even though we don't have the graphics going out past next Wednesday, is that it would be a gradual, maybe a degree or two cooling as we go into the end, end of next week. So even though we might be a bit cooler as we go into the 4th of July weekend, it still looks like it's going to be a hot holiday weekend. Um, maybe not all time record breaking uh, temperatures, but still very hot. Um, like I said, a long duration uh, event that we're looking at here. And then looking at the low temperatures, what you'll notice a lot of all these oranges or the yellows into the orange are um, above 70 degrees. So you'll see a lot of these days, and I'll wait till it starts again. Okay, here's Friday, and we're starting to see low temperatures not even getting below 70 degrees for a lot of our area here, all the way from uh, it looks like that was Sunday morning, Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning. And I believe Wenatchee here actually has a day where it's near almost 80. So it's got 77 degrees. So that is just the low temperature. So we're going from 110 plus to only cooling down to maybe uh, the upper 70s. So very little relief. It's going to be a, a big issue, especially for those that don't have air conditioning. And because uh, even trying to open up the windows at night, you're not going to get a whole lot of cool air coming in with temperatures only cooling down um, into the upper 70s, if not just near 80 degrees. So how long will this event uh, go for? So here are some records for the consecutive 100 days in Spokane. So the longest stretch we've had is six days back in 1928. And our current forecast is to have 100 degrees are uh, um, warmer for a high for eight consecutive days. So that would actually break that record. So from Saturday, this Saturday, all the way out through uh, potentially uh, Saturday uh, um, in the holiday weekend. Um, right now, it looks like eight days in a row, we could have 100 degrees or hotter. And that would be the length of this uh, very extreme heat event. So the historic heat, um, as some of the points I mentioned, um, the kind of uh, length of this extreme heat, that's something we've never seen before. So something to expect is more cases of heat-related illnesses, stroke fatalities be possible, um, especially for the elderly and for those who wouldn't be able to um, have air conditioning in their homes. Uh, for people who aren't acclimated to the hot weather yet, uh, this is, I mean, June is quite early for seeing, you know, temperatures. I mean, we don't really see temperatures this hot, but even getting near 100 degrees, that's pretty unusual for the end of June. Our hottest time of the year is usually late July into early August. So, um, you know, this is the temperatures we're looking at is even hotter than even for uh, our hottest periods that we see. Um, for children and pets, you know, uh, it's going to be uh, dangerous uh, for those 
as well. And obviously we don't want to um, have them in being left in vehicles for any matter of time as it will heat up very quickly in vehicles with this kind of heat. Occupational hazards, outdoor construction, farming, being outdoors for long periods of time will be a uh, big concern as well. And, you know, disregard this kind of advice, you know, hearing, oh, I like it hot. Um, or the heat's never caused me problems before. And, um, oh, you know, I, I'll only go for a hike for an hour or two or something like that. It won't be that big of a deal. Um, these kind of impacts that can come up on you uh, fairly quickly. And, um, and sometimes it, it might be hard to actually know that you are actually experiencing um, heat-related illnesses or issues. So this is something to take very seriously, um, the extreme heat that we're going to see coming up. And this is a slide that I am not quite familiar with. Um, OSHA wet bulb globe temperatures. Oh, we have. I see there's Andy on here, so maybe you can chime in on this, Andy. Let me try and unmute you. If I got that correct here. Let me see here. Did I get you, Andy? Can you come on? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Awesome. I'm sorry, I had some issues with my office laptop, so I jumped on my personal laptop and was able to log in. So thank you, Stephen, for walking us through all that. Sure. Uh, I'll, I'll finish up here and uh, just kind of walk through some of the messaging that we're doing. Uh, it might be obvious, but you might not have thought about this yet. It's just because of the longevity, because of how extreme this is, we want you to maybe take a few extra precautions and make a few extra phone calls to those uh, that might need, not be aware of, of what's coming up. Uh, one of those tools that we've looked at is from OSHA, the wet bulb globe temperature. And as I understand this, this is a way to measure uh, how much work versus rest people should do when they're outside. And it breaks it down between acclimated or unacclimated uh, to this amount of heat. So when we send out these slides, you'll be able to kind of read into this exactly what it what it means. And we have some examples as well. Uh, but just for uh, for instance, and I uh, let me go to my notes real fast. Um, as an example, when the wet bulb globe temperature reaches about 30 degrees Celsius, or uh, which is about 86 to 88 degrees, the acclimated worker shouldn't be doing heavy or very heavy work unless they rest 75% and work 25%. And unacclimated workers shouldn't do any thing but light work and it goes up from there so when we're talking about 100 to 108 uh, 110 in some locations that really puts uh, an extra tax on the body and uh, people might be just dismissing it as oh it's another heat wave this is an extreme event and it's going to be come more extreme as the temperatures don't recover at night the longer we go into this event Steve if you want to go ahead to the next slide which talks about the drought. Uh, just as a reminder, we had the driest spring ever in the inland Northwest. Uh, the fine fuels have cured early and are ready to burn. Uh, similar to 2015, we had a significant heat wave in late June and early J July that really baked all, all the fuels. Uh, so while we're already seeing some extreme impacts from the dry spring, I think this heat is really gonna ramp up um, the dryness levels and the fuels that will be ready to burn uh, later in July, if they aren't already or very soon will be ready to go. Uh, next slide talks more about the fire danger. Uh, yeah, so th this this is that comparison to 2015. Uh, this is a similar time frame that we saw the 2015 heat wave, but this is actually more extreme it's going to last longer and we might see temperatures even warmer. So this is uh, temperature wise, even more extreme than 2015. And then the next two slides, just go over that next one, preparedness messaging. You'll be seeing a lot of messaging from us, obviously for the next uh, week plus about what to do, proactive measures you can take and what you should be doing in excessive heat. Steven, go to this next slide real fast. Uh, 
I'm sure many of you do follow us on social media, but if you don't, um, there's going to be lots of this types of messaging that we're going to be sending out. Help us spread the word through your outlets as well. It's not just taking care of the folks in your area, but use that force multiplier to make sure that we're getting the word out about what to do and who to check on and how to avoid the heat. If you don't see things that you like on social media, you can go directly to the source, weather.gov slash heat. There is an abundance of information you can grab. It is all ready to go. Grab it, put it on social media, share it with your email list, whatever you wanna do. So lots of resources out there to help us spread the word about this heat wave. And then I think the last slide is just the summary. Uh, so we'll leave this up. Again, if you didn't hear it, uh, let's say it loud and clear one more time. This is an extreme and unprecedented heat wave that is coming. It will be warming up, ramping up on Friday. Uh, the peak of the event will be early next week, but not much relief going all the way into the next weekend with temperatures still reaching above 100 degrees all the way up until the 4th of July. There is some uncertainty in exactly how hot it will be, uh, but we are very confident in extreme temperatures for a long period of time. So that is the screaming message, uh, and I will stop talking. And um, I think if anybody has any questions, they can raise their hands and Stephen can unmute you, or you can uh, put something in the chat room. Yeah, we already have a couple. I don't know if you can see the chat, Andy, but we do have a couple questions in here, kind of. Um around fire weather issues. So one is for, uh, reforecasting and red flag warnings during the event. And right now, it's, I would say, I guess in general, from a fire weather standpoint, uh, we do have some winds picking up a little bit out of the Northeast for the weekend, but those winds look like they will probably remain light enough that it won't meet our criteria uh, for red flags. And then, Around Tuesday into Wednesday, it is possible that we could get some winds coming through the Cascades, through the gaps there. So that will be something that we'll have to look into uh, closer as well as we get into early next week. But that would, could be another period where we might see some winds kind of coming through the Cascade gaps and um, just with how extreme the heat is gonna be and the uh, dryness levels. Um, it might not take as much wind that we typically see that issue red flags for concerns with critical fire weather uh, uh, danger. So yeah, we'll definitely keep an eye, but those are kind of the two sort of periods that I'm seeing here that could be an issue with uh, winds and, and dryness. The other thing too I've noticed as we are seeing this extreme heat, um, mostly from about maybe Tuesday and Thursday, is that some of our guidance is showing things to be a little bit more unstable. And so if we do get any fires going, that could result in fires really picking up in the afternoon with uh, just how hot it'll be, maybe getting a bit un more unstable. So that could be another issue from a fire weather standpoint as well. Um, and then let's see. Oh, and then another question we have here from Julie Simpson. Have you been involved in any discussions of any inland Northwest risk of power outages resulting from the heat events? Have you been in any discussions with their um, public works? No, and I, I've heard from various sources that that's typically not a concern in the inland Northwest. I think we would have to reach out to uh, public utilities uh, and our utility companies to see if that is actually a concern. Uh, certainly, because this is a little bit unprecedented, um, just because it hasn't been a problem in the past, maybe it doesn't mean uh, that that's a good predictor for what's gonna happen this time. But I would rely on uh, those utility companies to, to fill you in on if they expect to have um, any concerns with this heat wave. Okay, and I see Maurice has his hand up, so I'll go ahead and unmute you, Maurice, and you can ask your question. You might have to unmute yourself. Not quite sure how it works, but I tried unmuting you here. Oh, there we go. I, did, I, I put that accidentally when you were asking the very first question if we could hear. Oh, Sorry okay. about that. Not a problem. I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just open up to everybody. And if you have a question, 
you will have to unmute yourself, but you should be able to unmute yourself at this time if you have any questions. I have a quick question. Um, this is Nico from the Spokesman Review. Um, is, you said, you know, you're very confident um, in that, you know, you'll have 100 degrees um, for extended, over 100 degrees for extended periods of time. Is there a number to that, like an over 90% or is it just very con confident? Um, I don't have an actual, I guess, number associated with that. And it, it, at the start of when we see 100 to the end, there is some, I guess, less confident there. And I believe that would be from Saturday. I'm just going to check our forecast here really quick. But our first 100 degree, and right now we have a forecast of 99 for Spokane on Saturday. So if they are only get up to 99, that wouldn't be the start of the consecutive 100 days there. Um, so not as confident on Saturday. And then I would just say we do have high confidence, not an actual, I guess, a value to give you there. Um, from Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then as we get into Friday, um, the trend would be for the temperatures to go down a little bit more. So as we go into like Friday and then to next Saturday, the confidence starts to become less if we'll continue the streak then. But it looks like at least for um, one, two, three, four, five, at least five to maybe six days, there's high confidence that we'll see 100 degrees consecutively. And that kind of depends a little bit also uh, on some variables that are hard to predict exactly how much cloud cover. If there are other regional fires that send wildfire smoke up this direction, uh, we that could actually keep the temperature down a little bit. That could actually help with the temperatures, even though then we would be dealing with air quality issues. So there's a few variables in there that, you know, whether it's 102 versus 100, um, that, that's tough to say. But, but like Steven said, through the peak of this event, we're very confident that there's gonna be an extended four, five, six days or so of, of the maximum temperatures reaching over 100. Again, it depends on if you're at the airport uh, for Spokane, at least, if you're at the airport versus downtown, downtown has a much likely, much more likely case that they'll hit 100 degrees uh, more frequently. So there's some variables in there. I think the, the takeaway message, though, is that we are high confidence for uh, above 100 degree temperatures for an extended period of time. Thank you for that question, though. Any other questions? Uh, let's see. Do we know? Oh, so here's a question here from Morgan Walker. Do we know if there are any relief area centers designated locally in Spokane or Coeur d'Alene? So I don't know about Coeur d'Alene. Uh, I had talks earlier uh, with the city of Spokane that they were looking up, looking to open up cooling centers. Uh, so I had provided the forecast for them earlier this week, and I know that that was the that was the effort that they were working on. Um, so that that's all I know at this point about uh, cooling shelters. Okay, and we'll have these slides available in PDF form to send out, right, Andy? Is that correct? Correct. We'll have to to do a little bit of editing to make it look good, but right. uh, we'll get that as soon as we can. Okay, that was another question in here too. I think I gotten through all the questions that were typed in here. Um, but yeah, continue to, if you have any questions you like to type up or just unmute yourself to ask. Oh, and we got another just comment, I guess. Pullman is opening a cooling shelter on Saturday. Good to know, thank you. And I saw at least uh, Okanagan County was had sent out messages via their, oh, I forget what it's called. Um, Maurice, you can fill me in. But I, I saw a message go out to everybody that the excessive heat was coming. So thank you for helping spread that word, Maurice. It, that's our emergency notification system. 
Thanks. Yes. Great. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Stevens County is getting ready to release one here in the next few minutes also. Okay, thanks, Rick. Any other questions? So my question uh, for those that are still left on is, uh, did we address whether or not we thought we should do an updated live briefing tomorrow? We will certainly send out slides to keep the forecast updated through the weekend, uh, but could somebody chime in and think if another live briefing would be desired for uh, Friday at some point? Input from Okanagan is that I, I, I don't think I need a live one uh, unless something drastically changes towards red flag warnings. If we're going to maybe see some uh, thunderstorms or uh, some uh, higher winds than what you're saying uh, are, are going to come into the area. Okay. Other than that, for the heat, I think I'm okay for Okanagan. That makes sense. Stevens will second that motion. Okay, and if there's anybody out there that disagrees and no, I, I want to hear from you guys. We can do individual briefings. If, you know, if somebody is like, hey, Weather Service, can you brief us tomorrow morning? Um, we, we can do that as well. So reach out to us uh, through the normal channels. You can email me, andrew.brown at noaa.gov. And uh, you can uh, send a request that way. But it uh, sounds like what we will plan on doing is updating the forecast tomorrow morning with an email and uh, handle any special requests separately. Sounds like a plan. All right. Thank you. Oh, and there's a question of if this will be recorded. I am actually recording this. So as long as I did it correctly, that will be available. <laughs> so yeah, we could re we could uh, send the link, upload that to YouTube and send the link along with the slides. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm not, if there's any other questions or anything else that we could help you with, um, otherwise we can wrap up. And like Andy said, we'll continue to keep you all updated through email. And if there's something that drastically changes or something that we feel like we should address with the live briefing, we'll send that out as well. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Stephen, for uh, jumping in and handling the first half. Yeah, no problem. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Bye, all. Stay cool out there. Yeah.